And now it's time for the story Mike Fink, a tall tale retold and illustrated by, you can't see the part of his first part of his name, but it's Stephen Kellogg, who's written a lot of or retold a lot of tall tales. Let's enjoy it. Mark was born not far from the Allegheny Mountains. Right from the start, it was clear he was destined for a life of action. You see, he hated being shut indoors, so when he was only two days old, he ran away from home. There was rumors that Mike had joined a troop of acrobatic frogs that traveled from pond to pond and showed their skills and talents. Mike's grandfather finally thought it was time to come fetch him. The whole town's talking about that grandson of mine who's been hanging out with a gang of rowdy frogs, he thundered. From now on, you are to stay home and behave like a normal infant. Once again, Mike rebelled furiously uh, against being confined indoors. He leaped up and down on the, uh, up and down on the bed with such force that he catapulted himself through the roof. On the next leap, Mike rocketed high enough to see the network of all the rivers to the west. There, he spotted some boats called keel boats, and he heard the crews of those boats singing. Mike plummeted back down to the house singing, I'm gonna be a boat man, cock-a-doodle-doo. Once again, Mike set off a family uproar. People who drive keel boats are ruffians, rowdies, and riffraft, warned his, warned his grandfather. This new outrage will disgrace the family name forever. Mike's mother decided then and there that her son would be much happier if she raised him on the frontier. So the next morning, they joined a wagon train heading west. Now, Mike loved the freedom of wilderness life. However, their ox suddenly passed away, and it made his mother sad. How will we clear the land without our ox? How will we plow? Cheer up, Mama, said Baby Mike. I can handle those chores myself. And he did. But Mike never stopped dreaming of becoming a keel boat captain. He heard that wrestling was their favorite sport of the captains, and it was his. He was not tall for his age, but he was sturdy and quick. Even when he wrestled boys much bigger than older than himself, he usually came out on top. Mike also showed an early talent for doing all sorts of things on the frontier. And he became such a crackerjack marksman that he could shoot the shell off an egg. Along about the time he turned 16, he entered a local shooting match. Each entrant had three chances to score by hitting the target. Mike hit the bullseye on his first try but his next two attempts left the target unmarked. One lucky hit and two wild shots put you out of the running. Sorry, chuckled the scorekeeper. But Mike got the last laugh when he showed them all three bullets lined up behind the bullseye, just like peas in a pod. Mike's skill with a rifle landed him a job as a scout, but he was still drawn westward by the memory of those great rivers. Finally, Mike found himself face to face with Jack Carpenter. He was known as the king of the keelboat captains. Howdy, said Mike. I'm looking for a job. This river cracks pip squeaks like peanuts, said Carpenter. Why don't you come back when you're ten feet taller, and then we'll find out if you're strong enough to pull your share of the land. I may be short, said Mike, but I'm strong, and I like a chance to prove it. Hmm. Well, I'm stronger than a buffalo stampede and meaner than a rattlesnake with a belly ache, snarled Carpenter. If you can beat me, the job is yours. Oh, and so is this red feather. You got yourself a deal, cried Mike. cock a doodle doo Let's wrestle. Carpenter charged forward just like a bull. Then he hurled Mike hundreds of miles all the way to the Rocky Mountains. The bears were watching. Well, that set me back a bit, admitted Mike, but I'm determined to be a keelboat captain. He decided to get in shape by wrestling with grizzly bears. At first, those bears rolled him onto his back before he could say Jack Carpenter. 
But Mike kept trying, and little by little, his strength increased until he was able to hold his own. Finally, he decided to test himself by challenging Big Bart, the heavyweight champion of the Rockies. When Mike came out on top, he knew he was ready for that keelboat captain job. He sprinted across the Great Plains, and he found Jack Carpenter. cock a doodle doo I'm back for round two. Let's wrestle, hollered Mike. Again, Carpenter charged like a bull, but this time, Mike met him head on. They wrestled up and down the riverbanks for several weeks, kicking up tidal waves and even knocking down trees. Finally, Carpenter found himself locked helplessly in a Rocky Mountain grizzly, grizzly bear hug. I'm licked, he gasped. After the orneriness had been squeezed out of Jack Carpenter, he became downright agreeable. And with Carpenter's help, Mike got the hang of navigating so quickly that the crew voted to make him captain. They sang and danced and celebrated all afternoon while the boat drifted lazily down the river towards New Orleans. Heading upriver was a different story. The boat had to be pulled and pushed continuously to prevent the powerful current from sweeping it backwards. The men forged through rapids, up waterfalls, stopping occasionally to tangle with a man-eaten alligator or an enormous snapping turtle that lay in the well for them. Whenever rival keelboats met, there were races on the water and games and sports on the land. Men lined up by the dozens to try and win Mike's feather, but no one got the best of him. His hat began to look like a bonfire, and they called him the king of the keelboatmen. Now, Mike loved all the rough and tumble excitement, but he also liked the times when the river was silent and still. He thought about his life as a keelboatman was just about perfect, and he hoped it would never end. But then one evening, Mike saw dark clouds on the horizon. He, told these were, he was told these were steamboats, and that they were being sent to take over the river from the keelboats, and that they all wouldn't have their jobs soon. Mike hated the shriek of their whistles and the clatter of their, of their paddle wheels. He hated the foul-smelling smoke that fogged the river as they churned past him. Faster and larger steamboats kept showing up. They created traffic jams at the major ports that made it impossible for Mike and the other keelboat captains to unload their cargo. A showdown was sparked when a steamboat skippered by Hilton P. Blathersby shoved Mike's keelboat away from the dock. This garbage scow is blocking river traffic and should be sunk, hollered Blathersby. I'm the key king of the keelboatmen, roared Mike. I'll fight for this dock. I'll fight for this river. All hands prepare for naval combat, bellowed Blathersby. With whistles blowing, bells clanging, and smokestacks belching, the powerful steamboat charged forward just like a rogue elephant. For a moment, Mike managed to raise the prow of his monstrous opponent, forcing part of the boat under the water. But then its weight overwhelmed him, and Mike and his keelboat, just like that, were gone. A second later, the cold water that had rushed into the steamboat's red-hot boilers set off an enormous explosion. One of the few survivors was Captain Blathersby. He spotted Mike's hat from his lifeboat and ordered his men to row closer so that he could collect the feathers. After all, I guess I am now king of the keelboatmen, and I'm the king of the river. Blathersby was astonished to find Mike underneath his hat. cock a doodle do I'm about for round two. Let's wrestle, he cried. Now some say Blathersby was thrown all the way to grizzly bear country but nobody really knows for sure. As for Mike Fink, well, he still cheered from one end of the river to the other as the undefeated king of the keel boatmen. And that's the story of Mike Fink. This was a tall tale, and notice it says retold, and what we mean by that is this is a story that was told from person to person for years and years. And Stephen Kellogg decided to do this, write it down on paper and put his own little twists into it. Because as people shared stories from person to person, they tended to stretch things a little bit even more to make the story more exciting. The other great thing Stephen Kellogg did was illustrate this book. I sure hope you enjoyed it. It's a great tall tale. This was called Mike Fink, retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg.